when you're young and your children are coming, you uh, you look forward to them coming back to the to the farm. And I was lucky enough that both of my sons came back to the farm. And it, it you know, it's it's you know, you get up in the morning, and if I didn't have, I don't work that much anymore. But if I if I get up in the morning, at least I have a place to go and and uh, somebody that can either, I can fuss with or they can fuss at me. People have a few choice phrases for me after this. <laughs> to me, it's like you feel part of something. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't, I, I can't imagine how some people, they, they don't feel like they're part of something. Uh, we're the Baining family. We have a dairy, a farming operation, a beef operation. We farm and ranch in Wilson County, west of Poth. Been here since the mid-50s and uh, hope to be here for many more years. The lunch kind of started in the mornings. Yeah, we were talking about this is what we're going to go do, but then noon would kind of give us a chance to kind of cuss and cuss and discuss the things that, that maybe didn't go quite the way they were supposed to that morning, and this is how we're going to fix them this afternoon. You know, The people that are here at the dairy and their spouses, uh, I mean, I hope that they feel like they're part of something. Russell, Russell and Scott both, they paid their dues. I mean, uh, some of the things that, that I had them do, if, if it would be now, I'd be in jail for child abuse. <laughs> I mean, there's no question about it. I mean, you know. Some people say four, five, six. I mean, it, you know, we'll just use five. One of the first times I remember driving uh, was also my first accident. I guess there was a certain amount of danger in it, but uh, most of the time, if we did as we were told, uh, the danger was pretty much minimized. He would tell them, he stays on this tractor. First thing I did, I jumped off that tractor, and you know, they're hollering at me, and I need to get back on that tractor, and I got my foot underneath that trailer, and just, I mean, tore it up really bad. Just tore it up bad. I can always think back to if I'd have listened to the to what he told me, you know, it, that would have never happened. It's 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 it was often when we didn't do exactly as we were told that uh, uh, that it became a little more dangerous. When they go out there and tell a man how to feed a calf, they they're not reading it out of a book. They know, they know what's going on. Checking cows has been done, I know, all of all of my lifetime. And I remember being like six years old and we'd bring all, we had, all of our cows were in one bunch. So we would have, at that time, we were milking 160, 180. And we've checked cows every week in some form or fashion since that time. Then my cousin Primo was, would, would be in the back and then I would, I would I'd transition to the computer Ryan, my youngest daughter, is, is going and learning how to do it. There's a lot to it, to, to making sure that that cow is healthy. You don't have a good side, do you, Primo? <laughs> my dad and mother went through the, the great, what they call the Great Depression. So they, that was really, uh, it was, uh, I guess it was hard times, but we always had plenty to eat. So, I mean, you know, what else is there, you know? 56, it, the, the drought hadn't broke yet. There was, there was nothing else growing but prickly pear, but it, it, it milked. The, you can milk a cow on, on, on pear. Well, you can't milk a cow on just dry hay, so that's the way we got started. And then in 19, 1956, well, my dad drilled an irrigation well, and we started irrigating. But in the 50s, it really in Floresville, Wilson County, it, there just wasn't hardly any job or anything. Everybody was going to San Antonio, working in the packing house or anything. The only ones that figured something out was the ones that stayed. The rest of them all, all went to town, went to town. In Floresville, Texas, at, during that drought time, the, you couldn't, there was no place to even buy a hamburger. I mean, everything just pretty well shut down. I mean, it was, it was, it was tough. Leland and his wife would milk one week and, and I would take care of the outside feeding and, and the farming. 
And then the next week we'd switch around and that's the way we worked it. So it kind of gave us some time off, you know, at least a different schedule. Anyhow, the dairy had a, at least you had some cash money coming in once a month and it, it kept, kept us going. The only ones that could survive was the ones that could diversify. The land didn't provide you with enough to survive. It just wasn't there, it just wasn't there. He was separating cows and, and Russell was on the way and, and uh, she said, all of a sudden she said, I think my water broke. And I said, well, we just have a couple of more bunches to finish. We finished the separating cows and then I uh, took Mildred into the hospital. But it was just a little tougher back then. You always short of cash, you know. So uh, we started flying in, in uh, and, and the flying service did real good. We had a lot of, a lot of customers. We went to Lockhart and sprayed cotton. And we, we sprayed that cotton 18 times sometimes, I mean, a year. I, I never did really completely tear up an airplane. I mean, I, I dinged them up pretty good sometimes. I think the, I think the worst time was uh, I flew through a, a three-line transmission line that went across the country. And uh, that was the closest call. It, it, it damaged an airplane pretty bad. If I could get that good, to get the bad wing up, then I'm gonna take off. So I took it off and flew it to uh, Seguin. And uh, the, I knew the guy there at Seguin that run the shop and he said he seen me coming and he said, he, he's, gonna need, he's gonna need some help, you know. So, you know, it, when we started, there was no, no government agency told you what to do. In, in 1964, and it got to be where, where the the flying service was just, it it just wasn't no fun no more. I just did a, our own until I turned it over to Scott, and he flies now. Palpo farmed 90 years ago, and at that time, he made 30, 40 bushels of corn in a good year. And, and he was a good farmer. He was a very good farmer. Farming that same land, if we don't make 180 bushels off that same, off that same soil, we're disappointed. First year or two, we had a really good year. And we had some irrigated corn, plus we had, we, Mother Nature smiled on us most of the year. And we shelled 120 bushel corn. That was just blowing the, blowing the top off of the bins. And, and it was, it was. Well, that same, that same scenario now, if we don't make 180 to 200, you won't make any money. The carbon footprint, you know, is, is it, that's, that says something for that, for that one acre of land that 80 years ago, 90 years ago made this much, and now it's making this much. I mean, he didn't hardly have that equipment to do that. We have that equipment to do that. That's major to me. GPS was probably the, one of the first really technological advances that we embraced in farming. And it, it changed everything that we did. I mean, you could, you could farm the same row year after year, or you could, you could move over 15 inches if that's what you wanted to do. With GPS, you don't have to drive. I've been doing this now full time for 40 years. And I, if you'd have told me after I was doing it for 10 years that I would feel like I'm behind the curve sometimes, I'd have, I'd have argued with you. But I won't argue with you now because I, I feel sometimes I'm behind the curve because it's just advanced so quickly. We hauled milk for a while, so we'd haul, we'd get up in the morning at 2.30 and, and milk, and then I'd get in the milk truck and drive to San Antonio, unload the milk, get back, and church started at 10.30. Was it tough? No, not really. You're young, you know. You just, you just made it work. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings which you have bestowed upon us. We ask that you would be with us and guide us, and we thank you for the, the friends and relationships 
that we've had over the years. We ask that you have the Holy Spirit enter our hearts and strengthen our faith. Amen.